dehydration right isoosmotic that whatever we dehydrated whatever we whatever fluid went out dehydration means fluid reduced the fluid which is reduced had the same osmolarity as the remaining body so we have isoosmotic dehydration in case of isoosmotic dehydration nothing is going to happen to the icf but ecf is reduced in size good okay so now let's see one more situation let's say we want to see isoosmotic overhydration so isoosmotic overhydration I have actually seen this happening to the patients accidentally. So, if a patient is given normal saline, so normal saline is a isoosmotic by accident. So, you said to the um, attendants or the hospital staff to inject 2 liters of normal saline to this person and that accidentally got infused to the next person next to them. What would happen is that person now got overhydrated, but the fluid which is given to him is isosmotic. So, if I draw the diagram for him, let us say this is a solid line, this is 14 liters, 28 liters, 300 milliosmoles is the osmolarity. We gave let us say 3 liters of isosmotic fluid that is just going to. add to the extracellular fluid. Again no water movement into the ICF compartment, why not? So, please do not say that because we added water, the water has to go to the ICF as well. Water would only move from one compartment to the other compartment if there is a concentration difference. We have given isoosmotic or isotonic solution, isotonic solution does not have a concentration gradient and due to that it is just going to stay out there. So, an accidental or deliberate addition of you could do the fluid overload as well in various diseases and try to treat them. We actually can, can cause the fluid overload to challenge the kidneys or heart and so on. Uh, so, isosmotic fluid is added and that fluid then uh, is going to stay in the ECF. Okay. So, now let us see one more thing. What will happen? What will happen if I added extra solutes here. So, let us say sodium chloride or glucose or any such thing. What would happen if I added extra solutes in here? So, let us see. If you add more sodium chloride, I am just using sodium chloride, anything which would add the concentration of the solute here that would increase the osmolarity right. So, students get confused in the exam because they are used to seeing this diagram of the bar moving up or down. So, normally what happens is the, the questions are asked like this that the solid line is the original situation and this is the, the dotted line is the end state. Guess what happened? So, instead of doing that you could actually start from the ECF and increase the osmolarity there, of course there is an osmolarity increased and then rip create a ripple effect for the ICF, see what would happen to the ICF. So, over here what are we what have we gotten? We have gotten extra sodium or extra solute. How can we get more solutes? There are many ways. One can be injected with 3 percent sodium chloride or one can take a lot of salt or one can have more aldosterone release in the body which then would act on the kidney and reabsorb the sodium chlorides or sodium right. So, aldosterone's function is a mineral corticoid it works on the uh, kidney cells or the nephron cells. So, if I quickly draw what happens, so let us say So, we have not studied the nephrons yet, but just to give you a quick idea, let us say this is our collecting duct, this is the late distal convoluted tubule, this is 
ascending limb of loop of Henle, hair pin turn, descending limb of loop of Henle, proximal convoluted tubule and the Bowman space. So this is our nephron. What happens is that the aldosterone it acts on the cells here it goes into the cell, it goes to the nucleus, we would discuss this in more detail, but what it would do is it increases this activity of sodium potassium pump by manufacturing more pumps and so the sodium would start getting out of the body of the cell. It also causes the aldosterone also causes increased manufacturing of sodium channels on the apical side. Again I know we have not talked about the nephron, so we will talk about it, but there are sodium channels present here. So what would happen is that more sodium will be taken out of the cell that would reduce the sodium concentration inside the cell that in turn would cause the sodium to be moved in from the urinary space. This sodium which is now coming from the urine is going to be picked back up into the blood and that is how the level of sodium can increase. So this aldosterone, if aldosterone guy, if this happy hormone or, or the chemical substance is released in abnormal quantities, then that would cause that would cause increased absorption of sodium, which would then mean increased osmolarity. So a person who is taking too much salt or a person who has got an aldosterone abnormality and there is an increased amount of aldosterone release in his body, that person can have the increased osmolarity of the extracellular fluid. Now the question is if the osmolarity increases here, what is going to happen to the water? So again it is very simple, the osmolarity here is increased, so let us say it went up from 300 to 310 milliosmoles water concentration is more over here relatively, so this water is going to move, correct. So when the water is going to move, what would happen is if I say water is going to move, so this chunk of water moved from here to here, so over here we could have a greater amount of water. And now what would happen to the osmolarity as the water moved from here to here, the relative concentration of the solutes increased on this side, so the osmolarity here increased, right. So again in the examinations they just give you this situation, you have to play it in your mind, you have to start from the extracellular fluid, you have to say fine if the os osmolarity is increased or if the volume is increased what, what is going to happen. So first of all you see if the volume has increased, if the volume has increased but the osmolarity has not increased then you can just figure out if volume has increased on both sides or not, so we will talk about it in a second. Here what you have to see is if the osmolarity has gone up, so osmolarity has gone up that would cause the water to be shifted from the ICF into the ECF to try to balance the osmolarity, so the osmolarity here will go up as well, this was secondary this was the primary move, this was the secondary move and the water moved out. So the extracellular compartment has increased in size, intracellular fluid compartment has shrunk, osmolarity has gone up, correct. So what will this be? This will be hyper or smaller over hydration, right. So this is the hyper or smaller over hydration, so anyways that is the um, osmolarity. Now let us say if, if we can take the sodium out, it's the same diagram, but what we are going to do is we are going to take sodium or solutes out of the fluid. How can we do that? Well again uh, through the renal, so somebody who is given diuretics, how do the diuretics work? Diuretics work by stopping the reabsorption of sodium or reducing the reabsorption of sodium. 